Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my first ever video I'm making. I'm terrified and excited because I promised to myself to do it this year and I promised to everybody else to do it this year. So let's roll. This channel is going to be about everything creative from illustration to art to um, tutorials. And I'm going to start with a tutorial on how to draw this fern leaf with a calligraphy tool, which is called Pilot Parallel Pen. And it's a square pen an unusual tool to draw with watercolor and we're going to draw with watercolor. Uh, the make I'm using is uh, my Jello or maybe Mijello watercolor brand uh, Mission and it's pure pigment so it's very nice. I like to use it and um, yeah let's start. I hope you like the video. I hope you uh, click subscribe on my channel. I hope you enjoy what I'm doing and I'm going to try to do a video every two weeks. So um, let's roll. I'm using hot press watercolor paper by Saunders Waterford. Hot press means that the watercolor paper is very smooth and has almost no texture. You can use whatever paper you like uh, and it's also 100% cotton paper. I forgot to mention it's very nice for watercolor. But for this test you can also use any paper you like. And if you like texture you can use a textured paper. Uh, I'm using uh, my Jello Mission watercolor paper, uh, watercolor colors, and I'm <laughs> using the uh, Pilot Parallel pen for this, as I already mentioned. Um, I'm taking cobalt blue, lemon yellow, and um, cobalt green. I haven't tried cobalt green before, but I felt like maybe it's a nice combination. I'm first uh, testing the watercolors and adding more water, so it's kind of a milky consistency. Oh, now it's a little bit too uh, green, so I'm adding a little bit more water. I, um, yeah, and uh, that's how I'm loading the brush. So I hold uh, the pen in the right hand, because I'm right-handed, and I'm loading it with the left hand. And uh, I'm doing the first stroke. So the steeper the angle is when you put your pen onto paper, the thicker your stroke is going to be. And um, I'm also lifting the pen at the end. So I'm starting with a with a with a one angle of the pen, and then I'm putting it fully on the paper, and then I'm lifting it up. I'm also testing the colors. There was there is a little bit of red because there was red in the pen. Don't mind that because it will disappear after a while. But if you're using a an empty pen, uh, there will be no. Um, no reddish accent in there. Yeah, and don't forget you roll the paper in uh, the pen in your hand uh, and you lift it up uh, so that you create that thin line at the very end. So start with the angle or with the with the, uh, with, the, with the corner of the brush. Uh, just a second. Yeah, start with the corner of the brush, go full on, and then you lift while rolling your fingers a little bit, and you lift it up so you get a re really thin line in the end and you need to train it a little bit you need to test it a little bit and try the strokes and uh, once you're ready when once you're done then you can start doing the fern uh, yes um, i'm adding a little bit of more cobalt blue to make it a little darker also because i want you to see it better um, i'm also adding a little bit of uh, violet um, uh, yeah i think this was the violet uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> looking for the violet here because uh, it's a new watercolor uh, palette and I need to get used to it. Uh, okay, you're gonna splatter also when you do that. It's also not a big problem because it's your test paper, so no worries there. And splatter is always looking nice. So yeah, I added a little bit more of uh, violet into the mix to make it a little bit darker and a little bit more attractive and it also it also got a little more like um, olive green which i prefer to this sap very bright green but you can mix whatever color you prefer you can make it very blue if you want you can just use cobalt or whatever color is pleasing and whatever color palette you are using for your piece so then load with the left hand and again, start with the corner, full on, and then lift the pen while rolling your fingers a little bit so that you create a thin line. And I, I would suggest you try a whole page of those, maybe on some uh, printer paper, so that you get used to this uh, stroke if you've never done calligraphy before. If you've done calligraphy before, then it's going to be very easy for you. 
<laughs> yeah, and you can do letters like uh, with this pen is usually used for uh, Gothic calligraphy, for instance. Or this is the fracture uh, script. But yeah, um, once you're done with it, uh, we'll start with a, uh, with a pencil drawing. I don't draw all the branches of this leaf, uh, all the uh, little things. I'm just uh, drawing the shape for myself to see how um, my piece is going to be. I also advise you to look at an actual fern leaf uh, to get inspired by their curvatures. And uh, then once you've done the very loose uh, drawing, or sketch underneath that we're going to delete later, you start working. So you load your pen once again with the left hand, uh, if you're right-handed. Test, uh, it's very important to test your uh, uh, stroke because maybe you loaded too much uh, uh, watercolor on it and uh, then you're going to drop and then you, you ruin your piece. And then you start with, uh, uh, with your piece. And uh, yeah, um, also reminding you that the steeper the angle, the thicker the, uh, the line is going to be. The smaller the angle when you put your brush or, or when you put your pen on the paper, the thinner it's going to be. And we start with thinner uh, lines because uh, the fern is very tiny in the beginning. If you look at the real fern, you will see that. And then we get thicker and thicker as we proceed to the end of the leaf. Uh, here, at some at some point, uh, uh, you you have to also try and uh, check that your distances between the strokes are um, uh, that they are equidistant and they're kind of they don't have to be parallel because in nature nature is not perfect so you'll have little imperfections. You can fill in uh, the leaves uh, if you have uh, some little mistakes. It's also not a very big problem. You do it with calligraphy as well. See that here my angle is steeper and so my uh, um, my strokes are also steeper, uh, thicker. Also, in the nature, if you look at the real fern leaf, it's never the same color. So you can, uh, while your stroke is still wet, you can add a little bit of a darker or a lighter or yellow color, and then you can, uh, it, it will uh, like dis dissolve in your painting and it will look nicer because our eye is used to a surface is not having equal color everywhere and it looks more natural and more attractive to us. Uh, so here I'm adding just uh, different other colors, like a little bit more yellow there, a little bit more uh, blue there, so that I create uh, some kind of texture within each stroke that makes it look more attractive. Yeah. Uh, and we're finished on this side. Uh, yeah, there I had like a, a little break, so I create more uh, more strokes and I try to emulate the nature that they are overlapping each other and creating more depth. And once you're finished with one side, you uh, move over to the other side. Uh, here you can see it better on the camera, which is <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, also adding, not don't forget to add even more different colors, Not don't forget to overlap uh, your strokes once you feel um, uh, sure how to do this technique it's actually it's actually very easy and it's fun yeah most importantly have fun with this uh, nothing is perfect so once you have a distance that a little bit bigger with a leaf uh, with the, with your stroke it's also not a problem and yeah overlapping um, and uh, also look at your uh, pencil drawing from time to time so that uh, so that yeah so that your guides help you uh, with the shape, with the overall shape of the leaf. And yeah, we continue here. And we're finished. Now we'll have to wait a little bit. Uh, I, I decided to add a little bit more that the, the, they were not on the drawing, like the shape. And then now you have to wait until everything dries so that you don't smudge accidentally. And then we're going to do the stem and delete the pencil drawing. And I wanted to show you how you can use this uh, fern leaves. For instance, I did this postcard with lettering on top, but the, the fern leaves that you see behind were done with exactly this technique. Um, also, you don't have to use this very smooth watercolor paper. 
you can use a, a watercolor paper with more tooth like this one and you can also use a lighter uh, like lighter paint if you wish uh, if you will you can use big sizes and you can take bigger bigger pens to create your piece so now that that our um, uh, painting is dry we can create a stem you i use uh, like the very edge of the nib it's almost vertical uh almost vertical on the paper so that we create this thin line and um, then you can kind of uh, thicken it uh, a little bit later so because if you look at the real fern leaf uh, the, it gets thicker at the end so you can you can thicken it uh, later on and now we have to wait and uh, until it dries, until your painting dries, and then delete the, uh, the, the drawing, the underneath drawing. You can, uh, I use the kneaded eraser uh, because it's very not non-invasive and doesn't ruin your paper. So yeah, here we are, we are done. I hope you like this video and uh, subscribe for my channel. <laughs> See you later.